Hello ladies and gents, we are going to do a roller coaster conservation of energy problem. Here's what it says. At the top of the first big hill, there are cars that have a velocity of 8 meters per second. The first big hill of the coaster is 40 meters above the ground. At the top of the first big loop, the cars are 23 meters above the ground. If 10% of the energy that the cars had at the top of the first hill have been lost, by the time the cars actually reach the second, the first loop, what are the velocities of the cars on the loop? Now, remember we talked about the fact that energy is lovely because if you can ignore friction or you can account for it easily by taking a percentage, path doesn't matter. So here's what we're going to do. At the top of the first hill, we're going to look at the total energy involved. And at the top of the first loop, we're going to look at the total energy involved. And because we just have a nice factor of 10% of energy loss between A and B, we're going to deal with that mathematically. So using Law of Conservation of Energy, we're going to say this. The energy at point A on the path is going to be equal to the energy at point B on my roller coaster, but there's a minus 10%. So A is going to have more energy, B is going to have 10% less. How the heck am I going to deal with that? Well, quite frankly, mathematically, it gets a lot messier if I start sub taking B minus 10% of A. Another way that I can do exactly the same thing is to say that 90% of the energy possessed at A equals the energy at B. And this is how I'm going to account for that 10% energy loss. Now, what kinds of energy does the car have at A? Well, it's 40 meters above the ground, and it has a velocity of 8 meters per second. So it's going to have both kinetic and potential energy. At B, we're still 23 meters above the ground, and I want to know the velocity at point B. So here goes nothing. The energy at A is going to be the potential energy at point A plus the kinetic energy at point A. The whole thing times 90% is going to equal the energy at B, which is going to be the potential energy at B, plus the kinetic energy at point B. Put our equations in, potential, mass, height, acceleration of gravity, plus 1 half mass the velocity at point A squared, the whole ball of wax times 0.9, is going to equal potential energy at B, mass, height, acceleration of gravity, plus 1 half mass, velocity at point B squared. Now, in this problem, we are told nothing about the mass of the cars. And that is because, if you look real closely, mass is in every one of these terms, and what that means is mass can divide out of the equation. And if you think about it, think about the last time you saw a roller coaster. Um, have you ever seen a full car load of coasters run with nobody on board? Yeah. Have you ever seen them partially filled with a few people? Sure. Have you seen them totally full of you know, the the Dallas Cowboy football team, so it's a lot of relatively big people, sure. So mass, when you're dealing with energy, sometimes, not always, sometimes, it will fall out and you don't have to worry about it. Um, just at a point of interest, when you go to the uh, amusement parks and they have a sign that says, you must be so tall in order to ride this ride, what is that bar for if it's not relative to how massive people are? Well, actually, the bar at amusement parks has to do with skeletal frame. They design the coasters so that the safety lap bars, etc., will hold you in if you're big enough. If you're too tiny, you can wiggle out of the safety bars and potentially get hurt. So it's a skeletal size thing, not necessarily a mass thing. All right, let's go back down here. So height, acceleration of gravity, one half, oops, plus one half velocity at a squared times 0.9 is going to equal height acceleration of gravity plus one half velocity at b squared. Let's put some numbers into this, and I'm going to end up with 40 meters is the height at a. Acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. 
plus 1 half velocity at A, 8 meters per second quantity squared, whole thing times 0.9. So let's go ahead and get a number for this side. The whole side, when I do all the math and all the algebra, etc., for this whole side, I get 382 weird units meters squared per second squared, and that includes taking that 0.9. Now, on the other side, the height is 23 meters, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, plus 1 half velocity at b squared. Well, these two end up being 225 meters squared per second squared. So, I'm going to end up with 1 half my velocity of b is 382 meters squared per second squared minus 225. And that's going to end up being 157 meters squared per second squared. To solve for the b, and this is still squared, I forgot that right there, it's going to be 2 times 157, and then we take the square root of that, and I get a velocity at point b of 17.7 meters per second. So that's the velocity at point B, right here, the top of the loop-de-loop. -loop. Now question part B says this, if the diameter of the loop is 21 meters, what is the minimum velocity that the cars must have so that they do not fall off? So let's take a look at that. Um, if I have, we're going to go back to a little centripetal acceleration equation. If I have a loop and it has a diameter of 21 meters, that means the radius is going to be half that, or 10.5 meters. What's the equation for the minimum velocity at the top so that something will make it around the loop-to-loop? -loop? Well, I'm going to go back to velocity minimum in a loop like this is the square root of the acceleration of gravity times the radius of the circle. So velocity minimum will be 9.8 meters per second squared times my radius 10.5 meters. The minimum velocity so that it won't fall off is 10.1 meters per second. So are my people going fast enough to stay on the loop? Yes, they will not fall off the loop. Yay, that's a good thing. Okay, the last part is at the top of the loop, how many g's of acceleration are my passengers undergoing? We can figure this out. G's are a measure of the acceleration divided by the acceleration of gravity. Now they're undergoing a centripetal acceleration, which will be v squared over r. The velocity at that top is 17.7 .7 meters per second. Square that, radius of my circle, 10.5. So they end up going 29.8 meters per second squared. Divide that by gravity to find out number of g's. And when I do that, I get right around 3 g's. Well, that is due to the rotation. But at the top of this loop-to-loop, -loop, they're not only just getting 3 g's because of rotation, they're also getting one additional g because they're on planet Earth. So that's about 4 g's. Is that logical or realistic? It's kind of a little big. Um, I might be in danger of having some people pass out on my roller coasters. Thank goodness this is not a real coaster. All right, we will see you later. Bye-bye.